Wow, that's not creepy. Oh man, day nine of unit one. I feel like the year's almost over. How about you? Summer right around the corner? <laughs> Just kidding. But I do have my Brugger's coffee and I'm on a second cup, so this is going to be a good day. So when I'm doing work at really early in the morning, since I've been up since four, I like to drink my Brugger's coffee. Kind of wakes me up, gives me a little pep. Come on, that was a good commercial, Brugger's. Help me out. During this video, at some point, there'll be a little donate button, probably around 10 minutes. You know, if you're enjoying it and you're getting a lot out of this, hit the donate button. Grab me, throw me a few bucks. Nah, or not. I don't really care. <laughs> well, I do. Because I am not the richest guy in the world. I actually like to take a vacation once in a while, but uh, not around the corner. If you're looking for all my notes, in all seriousness, I do, there is going to be a donate button. But if you're looking for all of my notes and my videos, go to MrKrauseMath.com. Click on one of the classes. Class 2, Class 3, Class 4. And uh, check it out. And if you're watching my videos and you'd like to make it like a Snapchat of me, <coughs> DeRoy, you better think again. DeRoy. I'm watching you, bro. I'm watching you, brother. <laughs> I don't care. As long as it's funny. This is just a warm-up. Let's see what it looks like. By the way, these notes are at MrKrauseMath.com. All you got to do is download them. Yeah, that's it. Two, two. My computer's not running great. By the way, if you do donate, it's because I need a new computer. I'm using a really old computer. It's like three years old. It's going to die on me soon. And then these videos are going to stop because it's my only computer. I can't use my work one because it doesn't work that way. And that's a pretty crappy computer. Donate or distribute. Distribute. Simple. Bring these 2x over by subtracting them, you get 6x. Bring this 4 over, you get what? Negative 12, and x equals negative 2. Wow. Really difficult. Moving on, gentlemen and ladies, looking at the three denominators. Oh, yes, there's three. There it is, right there, one. Forgot about that, didn't you? Looking at those three denominators, my common denominator is 10, because the smallest number that 2 and 5 and 1 go into is 10. It's the gazintus. Uh, 5 gazinta 10 twice, so this leaves me 2m plus 2 goes into 10 five times. So that leaves me 5 times 3, which is really 15 times m minus 1. And there's nothing that really cancels here, so I'm just going to give me this 2 times tw 2 times 10, which is 20 all times m minus 3. Well, that's just a thing of beauty there. <laughs> no more F words like fraction and fun and faffine. <laughs> I meant caffeine. Mm. Ah. It's like I'm addicted or something. 2m plus 15m minus 15. Hopefully you know how to distribute properly. 2m minus, oh man, that should be 20m. Goodness gracious me, minus 60. Let's see, this is 17 M's. When I bring it over here, I'm going to subtract it. So 20 minus 17 is 3 M. When I add this 60, I'm going to get 45 because negative 15 plus 60 is 45. So I get M equals 15. I'm telling you, my penmanship is impeccable. All right, let's move. So we've already addressed this. We have already addressed this. We showed how this worked graphically. And because of that, we are now going to take a look at it algebraically. Now we're gonna, son of a, yeah. Where's my mute, my pause button, my pause. Wow, that was fun. So, you know, I spilled like half my coffee on some of my electronic devices. Hopefully they're going to continue to work. Let's see. Please work. Ah. I'm telling you, this is some deadly stuff. I don't even know where I was. So, I'm just going to close the lid up just so I don't make any more mistakes. So, when we're dealing with absolute values, and let's take a look at this. Uh, 
I think you guys get it. I mean, if I took the absolute value of seven, wouldn't that equal seven? And if I took the absolute value of negative seven, that would also equal seven because absolute value is just as defined as the distance away from zero. So what we're going to do is because I get two solutions, like in this case, I get two solutions. My two solutions are negative seven and seven. So what we're going to do to solve these, what's this? What we're going to do to solve these is we are going to set two equations. We're going to set the original equation. We're going to say, okay, we're going to set x equal to the original problem, which was just 100. Ah, there's one answer. You're probably saying to yourself, duh. Don't say duh. Makes you sound stupid. And then we're going to do x equals negative 100. Notice we're going to take and negate the right side. And we're going to keep the right side just by itself. And there's my two answers. Now I can look at this graphically, and we're going to do this in class. And I'll take a look at, we'll just look at the first one graphically. Let's add a graph. Come on, wake up. My graph, my first graph is just going to be the absolute value of x. And this is not going to help me out because I need a bigger window. So I go to menu, zoom, zoom settings, and let's go. Oh, that's fine. Why are these so messed up? Oh, negative 10, 10, boom, done. Okay, so there's the equation, there's the absolute value of x. And then, just so you know, we look at it, we're gonna take a look at the line y equals seven. So we're gonna hit tab and we're just gonna say, when does f of x equal seven? And when you do that, you'll see that there are two answers. Notice we get an answer here, this is the negative solution, and we get an answer here. Sometimes we always, sometimes we don't always get one answer. Sometimes, sometimes we just get one answer. Sometimes we get no answer, and sometimes we get two answers. But clearly, you'll see a negative solution, and you'll see a positive solution. And if you went into menu, analyze graph, intersection, and we went click, click, it should come as no surprise to you that that's the point seven seven. And if I did that again, menu, analyze graph, intersection, and I did the intersection over here, it should come as no surprise to you that one is negative seven, positive seven. And I could do the same thing with 100, but I don't really need to. So let's see, that's what it looks like graphically. Come on, wake up. There we go. So let's see how we're gonna solve these problems. Now, I wanna point out one important word to you, and it's this word, it's a five letter word, not a four letter word, it's a five letter word check your answers because not always with these you might get bogus answers answers that don't that come out looking like they're right but they're not so you always have to check your answers so just as i said before we're going to break this up into two problems the original is going to go over here so you're not going to change anything you're just going to rewrite it as if like what are the absolute value bars even there for i don't even like them because what's in here can be 2x or what's in there can be negative 2x. Just like before, up here, one of them would be positive, the original, and one of them we negate the right side. So I'm going to come back here, and we're going to just solve these now. So in this case, I'm going to subtract x, subtract x, and I get 6 equals x. And over here, I'm going to subtract x, and I get 6x equals negative 3x by subtracting. And if I divide, I get x equals negative 2. Now, you must check both solutions before you can decide whether or not that's the answer. So I'll very quickly do that. Absolute value of 6 plus 6. Does that equal 2 times 6? Well, why am I doing 6, right? Remember, I'm plugging in for x. Well, this is 12 and that equals 12, so hey, that one worked. Let's try the next one. Um, absolute value, let's see, x negative two plus six. Does that equal two times negative two? Well, this is, neg this is four, and the absolute value of four is four. But in this case, this is negative four. 
This is negative force. So no, that doesn't work. This solution does not work. Does not work. So my only answer and my only solution is six. Oops. Well, this should be curved. Now I can look at that graphically as well. Let's take a look at it graphically. My let's get rid of this red exit. Don't save. We're going back into graph mode. And my first function is going to be the absolute value of um, x plus six. That's my first one. Oops, son of a gun. X plus six. Enter. Ow, 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 ow. I was sitting on my leg. Sorry, sorry. And then my other function is, my other graph is y equals 2x. So hit tab and we'll go 2x. Well, that's hard to see. I'll grab it, drag it, and grab it, drag it. There it is right there. There's where they hit each other. That one time, wait, why does it say 1.5x? I hit 2x. Didn't I hit 2x? How in the world can you have 1.8x? Like I didn't even press 1.8x. 2x. Enter. That's weird. So there's where they hit each other, up here. And again, if I wanted to, I could go menu, analyze graph, intersection, click, click, and there it is. There's the point, 612. That's the one point where they hit each other. One solution. So you don't always get two solutions. Sometimes you just get one. Now, let's talk about this problem. Rule one when solving inequalities. Rule number one. Now, are these official rules? No. It's not like, you know, badminton where you have to have certain rules. I don't know why I picked badminton. That's going weird. Rule one, get weird thing alone. Get weird thing alone. Well, the weird thing, and this is going to become, I'm going to say this over and over again, the weird thing is this absolute value. We've got to get it by itself, all by itself. So this 6 has to go over. So I'm going to subtract that. Now, don't change anything just yet. All we're doing is moving stuff along, over equals 3. All right. Now I'm ready to go. Now, rule 2, or not rule, but yeah, rule, split them. Two equations, split them. Two equations. Two equations. So we're going to write the original. X minus 4 equals 3. There's the original. And there's the negation. X minus 4 equals negative 3. Notice the only thing we're ch changing is the right side. Yeah. So in this case, I'm going to bring the 4 over and I get X equals 7. Pretty simple. In this case, I want to bring the 4 over and I'll get x equals 1. I'm going to come over here and check my answer. That would be rule 3. I don't know why this is like, yeah, whatever. Step 1, step 2, step 3, maybe that's what I call it. Rule 3, check, loser. I'm not calling you a loser. I'm just saying if you don't choose it, you're going to be a loser. Gosh, you guys are so sensitive. So we're going to do a check right here. Absolute value of 7 minus 4, does that equal ooh, plus 6? Does that equal 9? Well, this is 3 plus 6. That equals 9. Clearly. Remember, we check back always in the original equation. Got to get my collar up. Look all crazy stiff. Like, I don't know. Someone said once, I think it was my parents, said, why do you always have your collar all the way up? Or maybe it was my wife. I don't care. You know why I don't care? Because I drink Brugger's coffee when I check my answers. Mm. And when I drink Brugger's coffee and not spill it on myself, my answers are usually right. 1 minus 4. Plus 6. Does that equal 9? Well, 1 minus 4 is negative 3. But the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. 3 plus 6 equals 9. ka -ching. All right, chillin', here we go. Get the weird thing alone. Well, in order to get the weird thing alone, I'm going to have to divide by negative 2. Divide by negative 2. Goodbye, see ya. And I get x plus 3 in absolute values is equal to negative 3. Now, at this point, no, we're going to do the work. Watch this. 
Oh yeah, baby! Ooh, and then I'm gonna come back and then I'm gonna make you all mad. So I'm gonna do this in class, by the way. So if you're ahead in class and you're sitting there, look around. And if you've already listened to these notes before class, look around at all the people writing, copying down. Just look at them, stare at them, call them stupid. Call them stupid. Say, hey, stupid. What are you doing, stupid? You know, I don't mean stupid like mean stupid. I mean like you know, pay attention. Things are going on around you, and you're gonna be the only one that knows what's going on. Oh yeah, keep watching. You'll see. Equals negative three. So this gives me one answer is, when I subtract three, is it negative six? There it is, one answer. And um, over here I get x plus three equals three. Because remember, I've got to negate the right side. So this gives me x equals zero. I got two answers. Let me check both answers. So the absolute value of negative six plus three, does that equal negative three? Well, this is gonna give me negative 3, and the absolute value of negative 3 is positive, so 3 equals negative 3. No. Do you see it yet? And then I'm going to come with 0. Absolute value of 0 plus 3 equals negative 3, and this gives me 3 equals negative 3. No. So the answer here is empty set. Well, geniuses, had you been paying attention, I almost spilled my coffee again. That's going to become, that's like instant karma for being making fun of you guys. Yeah, I know that you're sitting at home going, spill it on yourself, punk. Don't make fun of me. But if you were paying attention and you noticed something, congratulations, you're actually really smart. Absolute values cannot be negative. I could have skipped all of this stuff here and gone straight to the solution and saying, hey, you can't take the absolute value of anything and it's going to be positive or a negative. You can never end up with a negative solution. So that one had to go. Makes sense, doesn't it? Man, I told ya. Let's get the weird thing alone. We're gonna divide by three. So I get X minus 12 equals 13. Split it. X minus 12 equals 13. The original. It's like Rocky 1. X minus 12 equals the negation of that. And it's like every other Rocky that kind of sucked because it's negative. Uh, then we're going to go X equals 25. Paching! One answer. And then we'll add 12 over here and we'll get X equals Negative one. Paching. By the way, I don't show work when I move those. I mean, you should be able to say, oh, I'm going to add 12, add 12, boom, done. Oh, I'm going to add 12, add 12, boom, done. Don't tell me you can't do that. Check. Because who knows if I got a bogus answer. So I check back in the original. 3, absolute value of 25 minus 12 ah, equals 39. Well, 25 minus 12 is 13. 3 times the absolute value of 13, of course, is 39. ka -cha -hang. And then we're going to plug in this negative 1. So we're going to go 3, absolute value of negative 1 minus 12, absolute value equals 39. Well, this is 3 times the absolute value of negative 13, but you all know that the absolute value of negative 13 is really positive 13, and 3 times positive 13 is 39. Did I say that too fast? Because if I did, hit the let pause button, Lay back it up and lay it try again. And while you're doing that, I'm just going to have me some coffee. I don't know why. So let's move down. You should be trying some of these on your own. I mean, you don't need to watch me do all these. I'm like a performing monkey for you. <laughs> just kidding. JK, LOL. Oh, nothing to do. Split them. X plus 6 equals 9. Split it. X plus 6 equals negative 9. And this one gives me x equals negative, no, positive 3. And this one gives me x equals negative 15. Because I just subtracted 6 from both sides. Now I'm going to check. Check my answer. So, absolute value of 3 plus 6 equals 9. Duh. 9 equals 9. Catching. Oh, forgot to check this one. Absolute value of negative 15 plus 6, does that equal 9? 
This is negative 9 equals 9. And the absolute value of negative 9, of course, is positive 9. Catching two solutions, negative 15 and 3. All right, keep splitting them up. Is this all I got to do? Is this my last problem? Oh, I don't know why I put that on there. That's for something else. All right. 4. X. The weird thing is already alone, so I'm just going to start salt. Minus 25 is equal to 13. Rocky 1. And then every other Rocky. All the other crappy ones. 4X minus 25 equals negative 13. Although the one with Apollo Creed wasn't bad. Or was that the first one? No, that was the first one. That was good. Add 25 to both sides. I get 4X equals... What is that? 38? Are they kidding me divide by four divide by four and contrary to popular belief it doesn't go in if you put in your calculator it will tell you it's 19 over 2 or it will tell you it's 9.5 um now we're going to do this one we're going to add 25 so get 4x equals 12 or x equals place and just for fun they both work Last two problems, kids. Last two problems. So, split it up. 5x plus 9 equals 16. I thought I put more than one that didn't work. Only worked in one equation. Hmm, weird. 5x plus 9 equals negative 16. Split it up. Original, the negation. Bring the 9 over by subtracting it. I get 5x equals 7. Divide by 5. Mr. Krause, I must have done something wrong because I got a fraction as an answer. It didn't work out perfectly like it did when I was in ninth grade. Shut up. Just be quiet. It's perfect. You're awesome. Okay, you're not awesome. You shouldn't have asked me that question, but you got the right answer. Minus 9. Minus 9. Perfect. 5x equals negative 25. Oh, this one feels so much better because it goes in evenly. I know, I know. It's a little disconcerting to uh, get weird answers. Now, when I get a weird answer like this, I'm going to check using my calculator. Let me show you that. I want to do that on this one, at least one of these. So let me go to my calculator. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 7 divided by 5, and I'm going to control var it into x. I'm going to store it. Now, don't, don't worry. It's going to change into a nice-looking fraction. So I'm going to take that 7 fifths and, and store it into x. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write in the left side of this equation. So the absolute value of 5x plus 9. And I'm hoping this turns out to be 16 because that's what the problem said. Perfect. And I can also check, what was the other answer? Negative 5. I can also check negative 5. So I can do negative 5, stow that into x. And then I don't have to retype that line because I'm kind of lazy. Just go up here, hit the enter. And now I've retyped it and I hit enter. Oh, look at that, 16. So both answers give me 16. Stow is an amazing thing. You stow. Isolate the weird thing. So we're going to get absolute value of 100x plus 1 is equal to, what is that, 51? Now I'm going to separate 100x plus 1 equals 51. 100x plus 1 equals negative 51. This gives me 100x plus equals 50 or x equals one half this is going to be funky this gives me 100 x equals negative 52 divide by 100 i get negative 52 over 100 which you can leave if you put in your calculator it's going to tell you let's see divide by 4 was that negative 13 over 25 it doesn't seem right can't be right let's check it one more time Let's do that. Negative 13 divided by 25, control bar x. And then I believe it was absolute value of 100 x plus 1. 51, and we wanted it to be, oh, forgot the 22. Doggone it. I forgot the 22. Minus 22 equals 29 and we wanted it to equal 29. If I could do the same thing with a half, 0.5 stow 
x and then do the same thing it should also equal 29 it does it checks it's awesome all right kids that's day what number is this day nine day nine day nine almost couldn't do those fingers it's done all right hope you enjoyed it hit the subscribe button if you're using my videos on a regular basis that would be awesome uh, if you'd like to donate so that i can somehow get a new computer someday hey you know that wouldn't be so bad either i'll write it off on my taxes get a nice new computer and i can maybe roll out these videos a little bit faster because they take forever to compile no not compile render they take a long time to render anyway all right guys that's it thanks for coming i'm gonna do number 10 in just a minute gonna be the same clothes bye oops all right i don't know escape it's there somewhere is that it all right clearly that's not working so we're just gonna do this pitching and